Hello and welcome. We're glad you're joining us tonight. I'm Naomi Reilly, one of the California Early Math Project team members. In a little while, we'll, we will all be playing and learning with ramps and rollers. We'd like you to play along with us. To do this, you'll need a flat, elevated surface, with, which might be a cutting board, a table, or a piece of cardboard, and some round objects. You'll have more fun if you have things that can be used to modify the round objects. These items could include tape, binder clips, clothespins, cotton, or sticks. Beginning at 7.05, there will be five breakout sessions. Please attend whichever breakout session interests you most. All the presentations will be recorded so you can watch them at a later time. An email will be sent out to all attendees when the videos are available on our YouTube channel. Now I wanna share a little bit about our five breakout presentations. We have John Duet from the Office of Fresno County Superintendent of Schools, who will focus on developing and presenting a family or community math night. His session will explore what a family math night can look like and how to prepare for one. Children's author, Natasha Yim, will explore math through diverse stories, food, and culture. She will also share information about her own remarkable math journey. Her session will share ideas for using food and stories to explore math concepts and cultural traditions through simple activities that can be a part of everyday routines. Children's author Janae Brown Wood will discuss loose parts and the powerful role they can play in early learning to support multiple domains of development. She'll share some hands-on activities for our parents and educators to use. Alejandro Alvarez and Scott Nelson from the AIM Center for Math and Science will focus on early coding. They'll show how playful movement can be used to introduce early coding skills and to explore spatial language, direction, and sequencing. Claudia Ferra and Keith Griffin of Math Talk will talk about an approach for creating culturally relevant tools to engage communities in playful math, learning in their own neighborhood. Their presentation will show how they are using math trails and augmented reality to focus on the math all around us. Now I'll turn it over to McKenna to talk about surveys and certificates. Thank you, Naomi, for that overview and welcome everyone. I'm McKenna Huey, another team member of the California Early Math Project. So once the breakout sessions conclude at 7.55, we'd like to ask you to take a very brief survey. A link will be sent to you as an announcement at the end of the event. The survey link will also be emailed to you. One, um, <laughs> please complete the survey as it informs our planning for future events. We are eager to know what you would like to see as well as how we can improve other events. Thank you in advance for any and all feedback. We really appreciate it. Once you complete the survey, you will be provided with another link to obtain a certificate of participation to document your attendance tonight. We recommend that you print out this document and save it for your records. And next, we're going to hear from Stuart J. Murphy, who has an announcement to share about a writing competition. Welcome, Stuart. Of you, uh, early childhood educators from around the world. And I have indeed a very positive and exciting announcement to make, and that's about the 223 Young Mathematical Story Author Competition. This is a big deal, by the way. So just kind of sit back and listen to a little bit about what it is all about. It's an opportunity for you and your students to participate in something really, really important. I know that Carolyn Fister commented on this at the last seminar that was held by the Early Math Project. And now I get a chance to expand on this a little bit and tell you more about it tonight. So I want you to be prepared. I want you to enter. I want you to be excited because I am. And so what we're doing here is um, we're talking about this competition, which is organized by Maths Through Stories. Now note, note that S on the end of Maths because some of us kind of forget that S because it's an English site that starts it and they say maths versus math when they're talking about mathematics. So mathsthroughstories.org. I uh, will repeat that a number of times during this very minimal and, and, and short announcement. And um, it has was founded in 2019, so not that long ago. And so far we have had entries from over 2,000 schools. 
we're up to about 2,500 right now, uh, uh, students that is, 2,500 right now, 160 schools in 18 different countries. And we would like our country, the USA, to be very prominent in this role. Maybe some of the winners will come from our country. When, and wouldn't that be exciting? And those of you who are here from foreign countries or different countries than the US, come on, yeah, come on, get in there and enjoy being a part of this competition because it's about writing stories about mathematics, which is my life. It's my goal. It's, uh, it's what I do. So the entries are open now. They opened up already. We've got some in already. They're starting to build up, so get your tension building. And the, but the closing date is not until March 30th, so you've got time to do this, and it's not long away. We'll announce the authors, uh, the winning authors, the winning student authors on May 12th, and the public announcement of the results, which is great for everyone because it gives a lot of publicity, not only to the winners, but to the entire comp uh, competition on May 31st at the end of May. So get ready and get set and go. And so what's going to happen now is that we have a judging panel. People wonder what is going on with the judging panel. Wait a minute, I'll get back to that. Um, uh, there, there's um, Right now, one of the things you should be aware of is that there is a guideline, a guideline to help your students do better with this. Uh, there's even a template. And you can find out how picture stories are written and what might win, what might be the winning uh, um, uh, equation. And there's the... Uh, um, again, there is the uh, website at the bottom of this uh, slide, and it'll come up again and again twice in this presentation because I really don't want you to miss out. It's really a very positive and wonderful thing. And so I'm going to uh, the uh, let's see, I've got to move forward with this slide, which I am having trouble doing, Carolyn, because something is keeping me from doing that. And so uh, let's see. Um, there it is. Okay, I can do it. Okay. Um, there's, I'm going to go back and forth a little bit here um, uh, because I missed a slide because of um, uh, what I was doing here. Um, here's a helpful um, here's a helpful tip. You know, oops, we're jumping around a little bit. Um, uh, let, let me talk about the judging panel. Let's stop right here. Okay. The judging panel is Vince. Uh, I know you see his very much longer name up there. Uh, he's uh, of Indian origin, and uh, um, he's a the founder of this project, and he is the Associate Professor of Mathematics Education at the University of Reading. A very popular young man. He's uh, really been the promoter of this experience, and uh, just forget all those other names. Call him Vince. He's a great resource for us all. There's me, and so I get to judge the um, 8 to 11 group, and uh, the, uh, it's the great group of uh, people who do a lot of visuals within their storylines. And um, some of you know my work because I presented at this conference before. Um, I have a 63 book series um, called Math Start, uh, published by HarperCollins. And they're all math stories that deal with um, positioning mathematics ideas in the context of stories. My AC Learn program is about social emotional skills, and there are 16 books that provide foundational skills to uh, children to help them uh, be better learners. And then finally, I've got my brand new book called Show and Tell, which just came out. And I'm going to tell you two things about that. One is an announcement within an announcement, and that is at the um, June seminar um, of uh, the um, early, um, uh, you know, the early math project. Um, I'm going to be presenting with John Duick, and we're going to be doing a whole project around, you ready for this? Around data collection, data, uh, organizing the data, and representing it so other people understand it. I mean, an important, it's a life skill, and it's really important for our children to get that. And so I really want you to think about that date and put it aside. And um, it's the end of June, is it the 23rd, Carolyn? I think it is. It's the end of June, and it is going to be a very important and exciting conference for us. I also want to give a call out to the um, illustrator of my book, whose name is uh, Teresa Bellon, as it says right there. She's from Spain. Uh, she works in Madrid. And the little icons and figures within this presentation tonight are those of Teresa. So I think uh, you can give a little high five to Teresa and all her great work. My co-judge um, is Cindy Neuschwanger, and you all know her work because she is the incredible judge of, uh, of, of this competition, but also she's the author of all the circumference books. 
you all know them, the classics. They're very important books. You know them in your classrooms. And that's not all. I mean, she's she's a, she's a, just an incredible uh, person uh, who has contributed so much to the field of math and math and storybooks. And so let's see, I'm bouncing around with my slides. I know that. I'm going to give you a helpful tip, though, to sit back and take this in. On the website, you can share the past winning and shortlisted young math story author entries with your students. And that will give them an opportunity to practice and create their own ideas. They don't have to do exactly what other people have done. Obviously, we'd rather they didn't, but they can get an idea of what kinds of things have been successful in the past and have uh, kind of a a level of activity that uh, I know many of your students will excel in. And so I think that helpful tip is very, very beneficial to all of you. And, um, you know, I want to say this, let's see, the deadline for entries, again, I'm bouncing my slides around a little bit, I don't know why, but the deadline for entries, if you look on the website, they say it's March 31st at 1700 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, United Kingdom time. That's 12 noon Eastern in the U.S. and 9 a.m. Pacific. So I have said that for all U.S. entries, uh, the deadline should really be the end of the day on March 30th. That still gives you a month. Come on, that's plenty of time to do this project. And it, it really could be great for your students. I think they will totally enjoy it. And um, I want to go back to one slide that I missed out on in my fussing around here. And that's this little diagram. Whoops, it went away again. I'm not very good at this. There it is. And so if you put words, this is what I do. This is my life. This is my life of my stories. If you put words that tell stories, pictures, which also tell stories, and math, guess what? You tell stories with math too. And if you put those three things together, just think what you're doing to help students be successful in their work. So I think this is not only important for me, it's not only important for um, all of our work together as early childhood educators, but just think what it can do for your students to put pictures, words, and math together to tell a story, to show how math is a part of everyday life, a part of real situations, to show how it's applied, applied mathematics. And if you can do that, if you can implant that in your students, let's face it, you're giving them a life skill. So I can't say enough to promote this work We've got five weeks to go. I'm going to go back to that other slide because it's got that prompt at the bottom of it. Just five weeks to go. That's plenty of time. I just can't wait to sit there in my judging office, my judging role, and see the stories you're going to create. So get with it, get going, and join the competition. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Stuart. Next up is our whole group activity with ramps and rollers. EMP team members Naomi Reilly, McKenna Huey, Heather McClellan Branduza, Carolyn Fister, and I would like you to try this activity with us. Please share your thoughts and comments with us in the chat. We hope you'll share pictures and videos in Padlet too. We'd like to give our special thanks to honorary team member Little McKenna for joining us tonight and playing along too. All right, now let's do some exploration with ramps and rollers. Children are fascinated with rolling objects and ramps due to their natural curiosity and determination to discover how things work. Science, technology, engineering, art, and math combined is referred to as STEAM. STEAM is important because it promotes learning that allows children to explore, question, research, and discover skills they will inevitably need later in life and career. Children build STEAM mindsets and learn many STEAM concepts when experimenting with ramps and rollers. By engaging in this playful exploration, children learn about the properties of objects and how they work, what rolls and doesn't roll, and what affects the trajectory of an object. Observing and modifying different kinds of rollers leads to child-driven inquiry as each child determines what they want to explore. This also leads to positive learning moments, even when things don't work as expected. When this happens, children can engage in problem solving and experimentation, which often leads to the development of new theories. As children become more familiar with how things roll, they may begin to predict the changes that their modification will have on a given roller. 
children can observe how the speed, direction, and stability of the roller are affected by the slope of the ramp and or the shape and weight of the roller. Patterns of movement can be observed with the rollers that do not travel in a straight line. Children can also observe how changing the textures of the ramp or roller will affect the roller's speed and movement. A variety of materials can be used to explore ramps and rollers with young children. Any flat surface can become a ramp and any round object can become a roller. Try out a variety of objects with different properties and textures. For rollers, you may use balls, cans, tape rolls, oranges, or paper towel tubes. To build a ramp, you may use books, tables, cardboard, or other flat surfaces. You can also use commercial kits that include balls and ramps. If you do use a commercial kit, incorporate the use of other free and found materials to allow the activity and exploration to go further and deeper. Also include other materials that children can use to modify and change their ramps and rollers. For example, you may gather blocks, plastic cups, tape, paper clips, or clothespins. To further extend children's exploration, include rulers or other, me or other measuring tools so that children can measure the distance their roller traveled or the height of their ramp. Have paper and markers available so that children can document their findings with drawings or notes. When exploring ramps and rollers with young children, encourage them to investigate and think about the relationships and characteristics of rolling objects and the ways that they roll. Experiment with the size, shape, weight, movement, speed, slope, and or properties of different ramp and roller materials. Be sure to focus on only a few elements at a time and allow children to explore at their own pace. As children explore ramps and rollers, follow their lead. Pay attention to how they explore, modify, and test their ramps and rollers. Sportscast what you see children doing and scaffold their learning by asking open-ended and reflective questions, such as, what are you working on? Or what do you notice? If a child seems confident in what they are building and testing, ask them to predict what might happen when another element is added to their ramp and or roller. You may ask things like, what do you think will happen if you add more weight to that roller? Or what do you think will happen if you connect multiple rollers together? You may also ask, how is your ramp similar to or different from another child's ramp? Return to ramps and rollers often to change or enhance children's explorations. Doing this builds a deeper understanding of the activity and the STEAM concepts involved. Now I'm going to turn it over to Naomi, who is going to lead us in a ramps and rollers activity. ramps and rollers. Can everyone hear me now? I'm going to just start over because I don't think anyone could hear me. Uh, so thank you, McKenna. I hope everyone can hear me now. Um, tonight we are going, going to explore with ramps and rollers. Um, like children would, we want you to experience what they will experience. We invite you to try out different ramps and rollers and see how small changes will affect how things roll. Being engaged in the tinkering exploration yourself may reveal moments of excitement, frustration, and possible pathways for investigation. Think about your experiences with ramps and rollers as you plan how to share this activity with children. We want you to explore and play with us. We invite you to share photos, videos, or comments about what you are doing in the chat feature or Padlet. Both can be found on the right-hand side of your screen. Please grab the materials we ask you to assemble for this activity or find a flat surface in some round objects. If you haven't already gathered materials, you can still participate. You can put books under one side of the table to create a ramp or make a ramp by grabbing a cutting board and propping one side up on a stack of books. Feel free to walk away from the screen for a minute or two to find objects so you can play too. Carolyn, Heather, and little McKenna will also be playing along with you. So let's start by setting up our ramps. Mommy. 
Feel free to add photos to the Padlet or tell us what you're doing in the chat. Let us know what items you're using for your ramps. Carolyn, what are you planning to use to build your ramp? Naomi, I, I've grabbed a, a couple of different things. I've, I've grabbed some boxes to um, get some height for my ramps. Um, I have everything from a cribbage board to um, a commercial track. I even have got some, um, I don't know, rubber tubing here that I thought might be fun as a ramp. And uh, that's, that's what I'm going to start with. Great. Those sound like great objects. Heather and Little McKenna, what are you guys using? Uh we have a lot of things we gathered. We got a couple cutting boards to use, um, some books and an art box and some board game boxes because they were extra tall. We decided to do two different setups so that way we can play around with the height of the ramps and have one taller than the other. Oh, how fun. If you haven't already, please start building your ramps. Remember to add a comment or add something to the Padlet to share what you you're doing. There's some really good ideas in the chat right now. Um, someone mentioned a, maybe a more challenging ramp. Um, we took a blanket and attached it to chairs and pulled it really tightly to make a ramp for the rollers to roll down. Um, I see some other great ideas, a binder, lots of books. Um, great ideas, guys. Wow, those all look like great ideas. See that Carolyn and Heather and McKenna are still building the ramp, so we'll still give you a couple more minutes. Carolyn, do you want to share what you're doing? Sure. Um, I, I've got a, a wooden box on the bottom and then a stack of three books, and then I've got three different ramps that I'm, I'm going to, uh, I think, start out with. Um, but you know, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna mix this up. These are the ones I'll begin with, but I think I'll be changing them. Okay. Wow, these all look like they're gonna become some great ramps. Looks like we're almost ready to start our testing our rollers. So if you can start collecting those, remember rollers can be a marker or a pen um, or even a lemon. If you have anything around you that you can use to roll down a ramp, why don't you grab that? Other than McKenna, what are you going to be using as a roller? We gathered a lot of things, actually. She really wanted to try out different things. She has a marker to roll. She's got this cool kind of bumpy ball and this little squishy metal ball. It's actually like for one of those protein blender bottles that she thought would be fun. We have a mason jar, a wooden ball, a couple cars, and somewhere we had a paper towel tube. So we're going to find that. It's over here somewhere. We're going to use a paper towel tube too. Wow, those all sound great. Carolyn, what will you be using? So Naomi, I, I'm using a lot of citrus fruit. Um, I've got limes and I've got lemons. I've got some wooden spheres here that I'll try. I thought it would be fun to see if I could get some batteries to go down the ramp. I took the uh, tire off of a remote control car. I thought it could be a fun roller. And I've got kind of spools and, and I've got a, a cylinder that's full of uh, marbles that I thought might be fun because it would make some noise. And what I'm most excited about are these walnuts that I grabbed on a walk the other day. Um, I think they're bumpy and I think that that texture will make them do some kind of neat things. Very cool. Well, why don't we all start testing out our rollers and make sure you put in the chat or the Padlet what, what you notice. What do you see in the chat? I'm seeing a lot of creative uh, rollers out there too in the chat. Uh, lots of people using marbles. Um, I see a lot of different kinds of fruit, apples and citrus fruits, lots of 
limes and lemons, canned food, also a really good idea, and just various kinds of balls. What would happen if we tried this one? Okay. Great. Great. If you've already tried one roller, why don't you try another one and see? It was a loud roller. I heard Heather and McKenna say that it was loud. Their roller was really loud. Yeah. And it looked like it rolled off the table. It's yeah. oh, a quiet roller. Let's try a loud roller too. Let's see how that goes. Carolyn's trying another roller. Oh, that was a loud one. Did you hear Carolyn's? Yeah. Whoa. Should we try this one? This ramp's taller. Should we try it? Come over here. One more roller. You're the walnuts. Wow, these all look like great rollers. Now we can explore how we can change our rollers so they may roll differently. What could you use to modify your rollers? Put in the chat your ideas. Carolyn, would you like to share what you are using to modify your rollers? Sure. Let me see if I can get a good view on this. So I've got packing foam here, and I've got mailing envelopes. There are scissors, seem like it might be important. I have rope. I have packing tape. A whole bunch of rubber bands, I've got some cardboard, some hair scrunchies, some tape, and I even have got some little knobs or little pads that you would put down um, on furniture that I thought might be fun to change the texture of the rollers. Great objects. Heather and McKenna, what are you planning to use to modify your roller? We have some rice and some beads that we're going to try adding to our mason jar to see what kind of different sounds it makes and maybe if it weighs down our roller. We have, what are these? We have some clothes pins that we're going to add to our paper towel tube to see what that does. I'm not sure what it'll do, but we're going to try it out. Wow. I'm going to stuff my container that has all of the marbles with other things and see if I uh, compact the marbles in there. If, if maybe I can get it to roll more quietly when it goes down the ramp. I love that idea. Now, if you're playing along too, why don't you all try to modify one of your rollers and type in the chat what you are doing. Okay, we're going to modify the roller. Feel free to also add a photo into the Padlet, which can also be found on the right-hand side of the screen. What do you think will happen if we do this? Can I put one on? What do you think will happen? And I see some great ideas coming into the chat about how people are modifying their rollers. It looks like folks are um, adding tape to their rollers to slow them down. Great idea. Also attaching uh, various items. What do you think the weight is? Like paper clips, um, clothes pins, slow down their rollers. I also see a lot of groups um, changing their ramps, maybe adding more books, taking books away to make it steep, steeper, less steep, you know, to make the roller go faster, slower. You guys are putting really good ideas in the chat. I'm going to change my my uh, my lime quite a bit. I've added ro rubber bands to it, and now I'm adding little bumps on it. I'm hoping that will slow it down. 
we were able to slow ours down too. McKenna and I actually added clips to ours and we were really surprised. It rolled slower and it actually stopped. You wanna show them? Show them what it does. Heather, what did you, what did you and McKenna add the clips to? The paper towel too. It's a cardboard. Oh. Towel. Yeah, so roll it and show what happens. Who knew? Neat. Okay, I'm gonna go test these. Okay, this was my really, really noisy roller last time. So let's let's see if it uh, if the stuffing in the end of the tube helps it. Awful lot more quiet. Okay, should we try this one? Let's see and this happens. here here's a lime, an a, an un modified lime so let's let's put those down at the same time and see if one goes more slowly than the other wow quite a different uh-huh you've already been able to modify one of your rollers why don't you test it out and let us know what you notice you put more beads I like that you tried to roll them both down at the same time, Carolyn. That was fun. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of good to compare. Hey, the beads are rollers. What? The bead is a roller itself. It rolled. Okay, you want to try it? Yeah, that would great. I'll go down to the end of the table and... But this is that. I'll catch it so it doesn't break. It Tell glass? me when you're ready. Yeah. It, it didn't break last time, but I'll catch it for you. Tell me when I'm ready. Okay, go. No, it won't. Ready, second. Like Let's see what it does. There, Mikana, what are you doing over there? We added beads and rice to our mason jar, and we're going to roll it down. She's concerned about the sound it's going to make, so she's going to plug her ears while I roll it. <laughs> Are you ready? Go. Oh, wow, look, it didn't roll. Why do you think that happened? Because it got too much heavy. It got heavy. Yeah. That's interesting. So the first time we did this, it rolled right off the table, and she was worried the glass jar would break. This time, because we added this, she said it made it heavier, so it actually stopped on the table. Wow. A little bit rice. Very cool. So adding weight definitely helped <laughs> it roll down. All right. If you've already tested out one of your rollers, you can definitely try to modify another one and compare what you notice between the two. Um, let's check in with Carolyn. It looks like you're creating another ramp. I did. So I, I've got a track that I've got going um, over an obstacle in the middle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see whether or not I can get the ball rolling so that it will go up and over the ramp. So I'm gonna test that now. It worked. Let's see if the citrus fruit will do that. Ooh, barely. Barely. Yeah, I got stuck a little bit. Okay. How about this? I wonder since we're making things roll off the table, if we can make it to try and catch our objects. Do you think we could predict where the object's going to land? Mm -hmm. yeah. How would we do that? Carolyn, are you going to modify your rollers? I think, I think Naomi, I just, I just, I've got the walnut on the, the, the ramp right now, and I just knocked it off, and it's going up over the obstacle. So I think I'm gonna, before I modify my rulers anymore, I think I'm gonna change the height over here. So that time it landed here. That sounds good, Carolyn. Hi, so with Heather and McKenna, what are you guys working on? We actually decided to modify ours too, like Carolyn, but we decided to uh, try to find an object that we could catch our things in. Since we're doing it on the table, not the floor, like we usually would for the camera, 
uh, we're noticing that a lot of our rollers are flying off the table. So we're trying to find a way to predict which way they're going to go and put a container to catch our object. So we're going to see if this works. That's such a good way. idea. Okay, go. Make Hannah's going to jump on and show her screen and show what we are, what everyone's putting in the Padlet. So Naomi, I'm finding that, that with the walnut, I don't have enough height yet. I'm going to, I'm going to continue to modify my ramp. Got it. So Colin just said that she's going to continue to modify her ramp because the walnut's not going all the way through her, her ramp since she's changed it a little bit. So it's a little wavy. <laughs> uh, you, McKenna, for a second to go split. All right. Thanks, Tammy. So yeah, we're getting a lot of great images and videos uh, coming in on Padlet. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen so we can all observe some of those together. All right. So a lot of people are getting really creative with the materials that they're using um, as ram rollers. Uh, we have a pizza box. We have a mug. Uh, we have a gaming chair that someone put drawn backwards. Um, it looks like we have a participant who um, compared the way a lot rolls versus a doggy. Um, which is uh, seeing, um, see which one rolled better and which one won. All right. That was pretty bad. I didn't quite see which one won, but maybe one I can share in the chat. Um, again, it looks like a lot of different materials are being used as rams. It looks like some rams are actually stretching really long too, which is fun to see. Um, let's see if we can pull up another video. So, All right. All right, so it looks like two different heroes were used to extend that ramp, and it looks like we have a table and some chairs used to prop that up. Um, you all continue dropping those in your videos in the palette, and let's go back and see what Heather, Little McKenna, and Carolyn are doing. Thanks, McKenna. All right. What have you guys been doing? Carolyn, can you tell us a little bit about what you've noticed about your ramp and your rollers? Um, so I noticed that for the um, rollers that are really um, light, that I need to have this ramp that I've been building um, up higher and higher in order for them to have the momentum to get over my, my uh, end piece there. And I'm thinking that I'm thinking that what I'm going to do um, next is maybe go back to my wooden ramps and see if I can find a way that um, I can get, get the um, roll or whatever it is to come back around and twist towards me. So that's what I'm going to explore next. That sounds like fun. I can't wait to hear what you notice and see when you do that. Heather and little McKenna, what are you guys working on? We were working on the trajectory of our object. We noticed that different objects roll different ways off the table. So we actually got a couple containers to try and catch them in and we modified and, and we caught a bunch of our objects. Now McKenna is trying to put closed pins on different objects, modify them. She tried taking them off one end, 
but leaving them on one end to see what would happen with this roller. And she was trying to put it on this ball, but I don't think the knobs were big enough to hold it. Mom, what if we put what if we put, we put something on the other? What do you think would happen? Yeah. Try it. That looks like a fun decoration. She's modifying our ramp with the clothespins to see what would happen. How many clothespins is she using? Um, how many clothespins do you have? How many clothespins are you using, Isn't it? Open. How many are open? Six. six. We have six of them. Oh, great. Okay. Ooh, it bounced. I'm sorry, adding the clothespins made it make the object bounce. Yeah, when it hit the end of the ramp, it bounced in the, the direction. Cool. Carolyn, what are you working on? Well, I was, I was seeing, seeing whether or not I could get the, the ball to come around if I if I place some bumpers down at the end and, and get, get it to follow and curve back on itself. Um, but I think that I'm going to have to use a roller that's not quite so heavy because mm -hmm. what's happening is that when it's coming down the ramp, it's hitting the wood and it's knocking it out. I'll show you. Oh. So definitely some design work I need to do here. That's awesome though. Yeah, maybe trying a lighter object or. <laughs> yeah, let me do that first. It's a good idea. Yeah. What do you think? Haley, are you seeing anything in the chat? What are people doing? Yeah, people have some great ideas in the chat. Um, it looks like people are adding blankets or just any kind of fabric in general to their ramps. And that actually slows down their rollers, which I thought was a great idea. Um, another person added that they um, sprinkled some sand on their ramp and that also, also slowed down their roller. Um, Someone else mentioned that the smoother the item is, the longer it rolls, and that the texture really does change the speed of the roller. So lots of interesting stuff going on here in the chat, you guys. Keep them coming. Definitely. Those all sound like a lot of fun. <laughs> I like the sand idea, although it could be a little messy. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a good idea, too. So it's a non-rolling object. Wow. I we just decided talking about different types of objects. She decided to try the tape roll um, that we use to make our ramp, just a scotch tape roll. And then she noticed it doesn't roll, it slides. So we were talking about why and what our rollers have in common versus this. She was saying that these are cylinders and the tape roll is not. So the tape roll is a non-rolling object. But it's still fun to watch it slide. <laughs> <laughs> that is fun. I like that idea. All right, we just have a few more minutes uh, with playing with our ramps and rollers. So about four or five minutes, and then we'll wrap it up. Have fun trying another modification. As you can see, we have trying a few different um, looks kind of like obstacle courses. <laughs> with her ramps um, and modifying her objects to make to make them go in a circle. So Naomi, you more about what you're Naomi, doing? it was interesting. Um, one of one of the people said that they were using um, material to slow things down. Mm -hmm. So I really think I had some sweatshirt material. And since the the ball was going down too quickly, the wooden ball I decided that I would use that on my ramp, and I did, and that's actually made the difference. Now it will, it, it has twice so far swirled around. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's what I was hoping it would do, and it was the material that was uh, the good idea. So thank you, whoever suggested that. That is a great idea. 
it definitely helps too. Um, like since you're on a table, probably with it not, you know, flying off the table. <laughs> See a lot of great chats coming in. Really think about what you're noticing. I know earlier we were talking about the different sounds that the rollers made and you know how you can modify them to make them quieter or even louder. Um, I wonder if anyone noticed like if you made a material louder or you know quieter, if it also affected how it rolled. Um, if not, maybe try that out. Looks like Carolyn might be building one more ramp. On your body a little bit. Yeah, I think I think maybe this one is too 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 thick because when it's hitting the wood bumper, it's just jumping up on top of it rather than going around. And maybe it's because it's cylindrically shaped that that's why it's happening. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this my sound tube also and see if it does similar things. Whoa. And then I have one other cylinder I'll try. Working on over there. Well, McKenna was noticing that even though the car isn't a cylinder, the wheels are. They're round and cylindrical, and that's what makes it roll. And so we were talking about would it still roll if the wheels weren't round? So she decided to modify it by adding, what did you want to add to it? A paper heart. Instead of it being round on the bottom, it's going to have hearts on the bottom. So the wheels are more flat, and we're going to see if it still rolls. Put it, here. Put it right there. Okay. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> I like that idea. I can definitely see something. someone commented in the chat earlier that's like exploring between sliding and rolling, definitely going along with that. Right. Another one for the other wheels. I'm gonna tape it on. Then we can test it and see what happens. We just have a few more minutes. If you want to try out your last your last roller or finish up your modification and test it out, and then let us know how that worked in the chat or the padlet, we would love to hear from you. Um, we'll hear from Carolyn and Heather and McKenna one more time. Carolyn, any last notices or? Things that you were you were exploring with? Yeah, the I, I it was kind of interesting. So, kind of going back to what I was talking about before, I tried four cylindrical objects. They were of the different sizes. These were the shapes that I was using for my bumpers, and I think because they were not they were not spherical, the bumpers didn't do anything from for with them. They just hit the bumper and then they jumped back. But every one of the objects that I, I tried that was more spherical, um, it worked beautifully and it, and, it, and it looped back around, particularly after we put the uh, material on it. So that was kind of a fun aha moment. It's quite round. Maybe. So if you sit there, are there McKenna, any last explorations or notices that you would like to share? Well, we're about to test our car, but... And McKenna is really interested in this idea of cylindrical objects and be around. And she said, we as people can roll, but we're not cylinders. So she wondered why. And then she said, we only roll if we lay on our side and our tummies are round. So <laughs> we're making ourselves a cylinder when we roll. Like when we roll down grass or snow. Huh. What a great observation. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I would have never put it that way. Her car didn't roll. Can you see where it, where it, uh -huh. it stopped on the top of the the ramp? It looks like, <laughs> and that's so after you, you put the wheels. Yeah, you can't, you wheels. Yeah, you can't r drive around unless your wheels are round. <laughs> Good discovery, little McKenna. That's awesome. Great. All right, if you, everyone can. Add their last comment or photo in the Padlet. We are going to close up the activity and pass it on over to Carolyn. So first, I just want to say thank you so much to um, little McKenna for playing along with us. Uh, that just really was fun having her join us tonight. So thank you. 
So ramps and rollers are more than, one, um, more than a one-time activity. There is so much to be learned from them. By observing children carefully, you'll gain ideas about their interests and how to support their future explorations and investigations. You may want to take pictures and short videos as reminders and conversation starters. In subsequent play, children might investigate how changes in the ramp's angles affect how the objects roll. They might use different materials and notice how these changes um, the way that the objects roll. Children might also enjoy making modifications to their ramp or roller for a specific purpose. They may want to create a game or make a roller land in a box or perhaps jump over another object. Future explorations might include measuring distance, height, and weight. Consider making videos of their experience, of, of their experiments, as a way to document what happened and to talk about what the children observed and noticed. This is a great tool for sharing what they did and learned. Talk with children about what they want to try next and encourage them to think about materials they'd like to have on hand for their next investigations. Try new things as you return to ramps and rollers. Try something new each time. This might include modifying the ramp, exploring how different containers sound when filled with other objects, exploring two-wheeled rollers, connected rollers, or rollers with axles. Let the ideas for exploration come from the children. We'd like to share a few existing resources and also tell you about an exciting new one that is soon to be released. If you've attended past early math symposium projects uh, from the early math project, you know that we are big fans of connecting math and literature. Here are some books on the screen that might be fun to explore with your, your students or kids. Ricky the Rock That Couldn't Roll, Roll, Slope and Slide, Round, Roller Coaster, Oscar and the Cricket, and Carrot and Pea are some great books. Two Spanish titles that you might also enjoy are Oscar y el Grillo and Zana y Dante. On the Early Math Project website, there is a book guide that can be used with the book Carrot and Pea and Zana y Dante. It has many ideas for enjoying the book with young children. Each of the book guides on the Early Math Project website have one or more original activities that are related to the book. The activities you see on the screen are for the book Carrot and Pea. The activities can be used in a variety of ways. They can be enjoyed with children in centers and schools, sent home for families to try together, or as part of a family math night. We are pleased to announce that the eight STEAM starter modules will soon be available on the California Early Childhood Online, or SECO, website. The modules were created by the California Department of Social Services Child Care and Development Division in collaboration with the Exploratorium and WestEd. They cover a variety of STEAM concepts, including one on ramps and rollers like the one we explored today. The modules share wonderful examples, videos, reading materials, and resources. They will be available in March at no cost to anybody, and they are going to be at caearlychildhoodonline.org. That's also on this slide. The new resource will provide self-paced, asynchronous learning modules, and those who take the modules can earn professional development hours and are provided with a certificate. The Early Math Project book guides and activities can be found on the Early Math Project website. The address for that is www.earlymathca.org. They can also be found on the free Count Play Explorer application, which can be found at www.countplayexplore.org. When you visit both of these sites, look for the I'm Ready video series. These are a group of videos that are very short and humorous. They're available in English and Spanish, and they showcase mathematical fun everywhere. One final note about some resources. On the Early Math Project website, there are book guides and activities for a lot of great books that we 
um, have in addition to the ones that we talked about earlier. Tonight, our presenters include a, a children's book authors, Janae Brown Wood and Natasha Yim. You'll find book guides for some of their books, Grandma's Tiny House, Too Small Tyson, and Luna's Yum Yum Dim Sum on the Early Math Project website. And lastly, I'd like to give a word of appreciation to Dave Scahill, who has supported the Early Math Project from the very start and has been a very kind partner to us. Thanks also to the Discovery Source and Kodo Kids who provided some of the materials that you saw this evening. Thanks to you all for playing along with us. I'll turn it over to Haley to explain what's next. Thank you all so much for participating and sharing your comments in the chat and sharing your photos in the Padlet. That was just so much fun. Um, so now uh, breakout presentations will begin at 7.05. Uh, you have five presentations to choose from. All of the sessions are being recorded and will be available on the Early Math Project's YouTube channel within a ne the next couple of days. So you can um, maybe stretch, get a drink of water, and then we will be back again at 7.05.